Hello, my name is Jeremy. This is Remedies Recording, and today I want to talk about clock. Clock is one of those super, super important things that goes all over the place and does really, really important things, both in the uh, Eurorack world and not. And um, I think it's kind of misunderstood, and I just want to kind of make it less misunderstood. So, easiest way to start talking about clock is as beats per minute the tempo of a song. This MIDI gnome right here, I have plugged directly into my audio interface right now, and you're hearing a click that represents beats per minute, or could, if you want. So, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, the tempo of a song. I'm gonna unplug this, but before I do, I want you to understand that what's coming out of here is an analog clock and it's basically just a little pulse, a little square wave. And that's how analog clock gets sent around systems. It's pretty neat. So let's unplug this from here. So I'm gonna take a split cable here and we're going to plug this into the tempo input of the make noise O-Coast and the sync input of the noodle box sequencer. So what's happening now? Well, you can see that our little clock thing here is reacting to our tempo. And as I speed this up, it goes faster. So clock. Oh, hey, look at over here. That's moving as well. How interesting. The noodle box can accept different types of clocks, including MIDI and uh, this sync input here. If we go back to the main page here, we'll see that this is responding twice as fast as this is sending out. That's because this is set to multiply the clock coming out of here to get a slightly faster result. And that's really, really important. A one pulse per quarter note clock, which represents tempo like we talked about, doesn't really give us the amount of resolution we need to do basic music sort of subdivision when it comes to clock stuff. So we need to multiply a one pulse per quarter note clock to be able to do things like 16th notes. So let's go and look at how we would do that here. But first, let's go ahead and make a sequence. I'm going to plug this into our Ocoast and gate. Gate which is what triggers things like envelopes, is actually pretty much the exact same thing of what's coming out of this clock. Gates, clocks, triggers all share a relationship with each other. And that's really, really important to keep in mind as we go forward. Now, let's do something so we can hear the tempo against that. Remember, we plugged our tempo into this, so this is sending out a clock pulse. So, let's go ahead and put that into the trig. Can you hear the modulation coming off of this? Let me make it easier for you. We're taking the one pulse per quarter note out of here. It's now triggering our amplitude envelope and out of here, we're triggering a modulation envelope. Let's make this into 16th notes by multiplying the clock. See the rate here? Go ahead and add some more gates so you can really hear those 16th notes. Let's put these back the way that they originally were. There's some 16th notes. And you can hear our tempo, or our one pulse per quarter note clock. Doing the modulation.
one pulse per quarter note multiplied to four pulses one pulse per quarter note multiplied to four pulses oh my god i can't say it one pulse per quarter note multiplied to four pulse porpoises por blah, blah, blah. one pulse per quarter note multiplied to four pulses per quarter note so this is a really really simple and rudimentary example of clock things get a bit more complicated when you start adding more stuff as you might imagine having something like the midi gnome or the noodle box that can bridge between analog clock and midi clock are super 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 good to have around because midi has its own sort of standard built into it for clock and that all travels over the MIDI cable. Let's complicate this setup a bit more with some more Yorak stuff and talk about more complex iterations of clock and how you can get them around your system. Okay? Hi, I told you I was going to complicate things. There's a lot going on right here, but uh, don't worry. It's all going to make sense shortly. Fun fact, I recorded like probably the entire demonstration I wanted to do with this and then realized that I had the wrong audio input set for recording this. So we're doing it again. <laughs> Video is fantastic. All right. There's a lot of things up here that make sound and pass sound around and modulate sound. And down here are things that make signals that uh, send clock and gate and things like that around to various systems. So let's start from the left over here and talk about what we're looking at. This is Tempe by Make Noise. It creates clocks. See these blinkies? They are all doing clock stuff. They're all sending out gates. Let's listen to one real quick, shall we? Wonderful. Now, you'll also notice that Tempe is just going right now, and uh, that's kind of a problem I have with Tempe. I have another big problem with Tempe as well, but we'll talk about it in a second. Tempe is sending out gate signals to Rene, Mark II here. Rene receives gate signals in these inputs right here. Anything from Make Noise that has these little circles around it um, is something that you can send a gate to. And you can see that we are traveling through the sequencer, and that's because we are getting gate signals from Tempe. Over here is Steppy. Steppy sends out gate signals as well. There's a pulse per quarter note gate from Steppy. Steppy's currently going to be triggering kick drum from uh, our friend over here so we can sort of have a metronome as we work through this stuff. To the right of Steppy is Pamela's new workout, a uh, module that I recommend everybody have in their rack for a number of reasons. Each one of these eight outputs here can send out modulation and or gates, clocks, in a variety of subdivided and interesting ways. LFOs, random clocks, Euclidean rhythms, uh, probability, all kinds of really, really good stuff. This is a workhorse and it is the master clock in my system. We have a molt over here that is taking all, a lot of clock signals and reset signals and sending around. We'll talk about that um, in a second. We have a clock divider and multiplier, which is a useful utility. I send it a clock and I can speed up or slow down that clock. Let's, uh, let's hear what that sounds like, shall we? Doesn't sound like anything to me. There we go. Fun stuff. To the right of that, we have an, a little arpeggiator, and that's the first thing we're going to sort of experience clock with. Then we have the This Is Not Rocket Science Tuesday uh, algorithmic sequencer, which is um, going to create some stuff for us. Maybe some gate signals, not really sure. You can see it blinking to the tempo right now. And then we have DivKids OCHD, which is a really, really fantastic LFO module. So we talked about Tempe just going. This is a problem. PAMS is my master clock. Why is this just going? Why, why won't it stop? I want to be able to hit start and stop over here. Well, that's because Tempe's stupid. Not only Tempe is stupid in this respect, but also Tempe has a really hard time picking up clock. It takes two pulses for Tempe to pick up clock from an external source, and that's bad. I will likely be replacing Tempe in my system. I really like it, but those two things are super bad. So the way that I solved the always going problem is that one of the ways you can treat the mod input is a sort of like stop start uh, state. And um, it's not great, uh, but it does work. So the way that you have to do this is by double clicking B, turning on this option and making sure that you are not playing over here. So now Tempe is not playing because I'm not playing over here. And the reason this works is because this mod input is receiving a 
pulse, a full 100% pulse width pulse that tells this to continue going. So basically, as long as it's receiving a voltage, it will play. Now, I still have the problem, unfortunately, of that this takes two pulses from an external clock to actually lock to tempo. And that might not seem like a big deal, but it really, really is. It means that the moment that you start this thing, the thing that I send out clocks to, all of stuff in here, um, it takes two pulses to actually pick up. And that means my drums are out of sync for a bit. Uh, this is out of sync. My delay is out of sync. Everything's out of sync. And that's no bueno. Um, so uh, make noise. Come on. Seriously, what the hell? Uh, like I said, I solved that problem with uh, a 100% gate pulse. I have that molted out to um, the reset here of Steppy. Take a look at this little friend right here, this red LED. This represents the position that Steppy is in in the sequencer. And when I hit start, st stop, start, stop, start, stop, Steppy returns to the first step. And that's because it's receiving a reset signal. Reset signals are usually just like a little pulse gate. Same thing as our clock signals that we've been sending around so far. So another thing to keep in mind with a system is how are you going to be sending reset around? Where are you going to get your reset gate from? Are you going to molt it and send it out to things? It's just kind of like one of those things that like I think a lot of people don't consider uh, when, they're, when they're building their system. How am I going to clock all this stuff? How am I going to get it to work? And we haven't even talked about the fact that different modules expect different pulses per quarter note. So we will talk about that, uh, I think, with my other system. But for this system, I just kind of want to talk about like the way that clock can be used creatively and um, utilitarianly. So first things first, let's grab a clock from Tempe and put it into the ARP and hit play here. The ARP is sending out one volt per octave to the Instro TSL, and we're going to bring this in. I'd like to quickly demonstrate to you. Hear that weird flubbox in the beginning? That is Tempe being real dumb. Okay, so now we're sending out this gate signal to the ARP. I can speed this up and slow it down. Pretty useful, right? Renee sends out gates, and um, I'm on the gate page right now. You can see that we're getting gate signals right here. Let's go ahead and grab a gate from Renee. I think it's about time we gave ourselves a little kick drum. Great. So now we can hear the gates from here and our gate from here. Eighth notes, sixteenth notes. Here's our tempo, one pulse per quarter note. What does sixteenth note sound like in the ARP? Okay, cool. What about a weird gate pattern? So the arpeggiator here has five notes in its sequence, four or five notes. And by breaking up the gate, we create a, I don't wanna say polyrhythm, but we create a more interesting pattern. PAMS is really, really good for this. You can set up Euclidean rhythms on PAMS and it will constantly evolve. You can also set probability. That's all well and good. I 
I've switched over our sequence now to Rene, which is sending out quantized values via this sequence. We already talked a little bit about the fact that when you send a note value out on Rene, you can also get a gate. Right now, all of these are set to send out a gate. Let's go ahead and listen to that real quick. Now, why is this important? Well, the fact that I just had to turn that down is why this is important. Traditional synth voices have an oscillator that creates a sound, and then at least one envelope, usually uh, an envelope to control the volume of the sound. And what we're missing in this equation here is a volume envelope, because this is just going to continually go forever. And the way that volume envelopes work in your rack is also using the same type of signal traditionally that you use for clock, that little gate pulse. So the most traditional use for this, traditional way of doing this would be to grab a gate that is sent every single time you change a note. So we've done that here, and we're going to plug this into an envelope generator, in this case, Quadrax. See how it says trig? Well, trig, gate, you know, sort of the same thing, sort of similar thing, you know, good shit. Now we have to take our oscillator and put it into a voltage controlled amplifier in this case quad vca so let's uh let's take this out of our vca and let's take this and put it into our vca send our cv signal that creates the envelope into our vca and hopefully we won't hear anything that's good All right, after much bullshit, I got this working. So now, the same thing, that, the same event that's happening in time to change our note value is now triggering an envelope. What if I remove some of those gates? So not super interesting. Let's uh let's switch this up. By combining different gate signals into one voice, different clock signals, and having them do different things, you can create much more interesting patches. Now Remember how I said earlier that little circles around an input on a make noise thing means clock or trigger? Our friend over here, Mimeophone, maybe the best module in the world, is thirsty for clock. Let's go to channel C of Steppy and plug it in here. When I start feeding this tempo, it's going to sink. See how it snaps into tempo? divisions. Now I can clock this faster if I want. Or slower. Clocking delays is one of my favorite things in the world to do. Because it creates sympathetic rhythms. This also wants a clock in, and I found that in order to get it to stop doing triplets, I needed to send it an eighth note clock, a two pulse per quarter note clock.
Okay, so what did we talk about? We talked about the fact that you can send clock as tempo, you can subdivide clock, and you can send clock out as gates and interesting rhythms to create events. We also send clock gates out as triggers to do things like trigger modulation sources. And when we clock things like delays that like clock or mimeophone or this, we get a pleasing tempo synced experience. on to the bigger system and talk about clock over there. See you in a second. Okay, friends, we are at the final boss of <laughs> talking about clock, and that is what I like to call the big honking rack. There are a lot of things in here that want clock for a variety of reasons, and I'm going to try to explain how I did clock in here and reset, and also some ways that you can play with clock and reset depending on how you set it up. So the first thing that probably wants clock and reset is um, the square per mod here. This is my main melodic sequencer. It's sending one volt per octave and gate out to all of the voices right here that you see. It needs clock. It can obviously create its own clock internally, but I'm not doing that because I have a lot of other things that also want clock. So the deal with the square per mod is it doesn't, at least at the time of recording this video, have the ability to do what I would call normal clocks. A normal clock in this case would be 48 pulses per quarter note, like Pam's really likes, 24 pulses per quarter note, which Pam's also likes, and is a high resolution clock that is good for high resolution things. Um, in fact, 
it, it would rather have like the weird subdivisions of 16. And that was no bueno. So the solution to that was send it clock from the Keystep Pro, which I'll talk about in a second, over USB. So this friend is getting clock via USB. Next to it is Pamela's new workout. We talked about Pam's in the other uh, rack over there. This thing wants clock and run. Run is a sort of a different kind of reset that tells something to uh, go or not. You saw that we set up a sort of uh, run condition with Tempe and Pam's in the other rack. So Pamela's here um, is getting a, a clock, a high resolution clock from the Keystep Pro, as well as a run signal from the Keystep Pro. The Keystep Pro can do both of those. The variegate here, which sequences my drums, also wants a clock and reset. It's a sequencer. It has 16 steps. I want it to go back to the beginning every single time I hit stop and play. It also needs a clock. Now, unlike the Hermod and unlike Pam's, this wants clock, at least uh, as far as I know, at four pulses. There it is again. Four pulses per quarter. Four pulses per quarter note or 16th notes. And when I first got this thing, I was sending it... Um, what was I sending it? Uh, 48 PPQ. Because all it does, it says clock. It says clock in. You have no idea what that clock in is. Like, it doesn't say. I couldn't find it in the manual. I had to email Maliko Heavy Industries and say, hey, my thing is going crazy. Uh, what's up? And they're like, oh yeah, it wants uh, 16th notes. And I'm like, okay, well, how am I going to rock that out? Well, there's a lot of different clock outputs with the Keystep Pro. But what I ended up doing was using one of the eight drum gates out to send this the appropriate triggers. And we'll talk about why that's interesting in the context of this stuff in a second. Another thing that wants clock is the ADE32 Octo Controller, this friend right here. Eight channel modulation generation thing that um, can create various types of modulation in um, various subdivisions of the beat. This thing can respond to a few different PPQs, I believe, but I think I have it set up to respond to one pulse per quarter note. But it's interesting because I'm also using a drum gate out and we can play with it and screw it up and make it do weird things, which is really, really fun. The Lifeforms micro sequencer is a little step sequencer. The Lifeforms micro sequencer also wants some sort of clock signal and it could be whatever you want. It really doesn't need to be tempo synced um, to any normal beat at all. So what I have going on right now is some gates being sent out from here. It's going into this clock divider and it's going into the micro sequencer. And what we're going to see is as we play with the Keystep Pro in the context of this patch, all of the modulation here, because it's being triggered by drum gates, is malleable in how we send it drum gates. And that's where clock starts to get really interesting. So let's hit play and see if I need to talk to you about anything else here before we move on to the Keystep Pro. Okie dokie. The sequences you're hearing right now are from the Piston Honda. It's running into the stereo dipole filter over there. Both the Piston Honda and the stereo dipole filter are going to be getting modulation from this. I wanted to like put as much modulation out there through this so that when we start playing with the drum gates or the clock of that, you can hear how much it can affect our signal. There's also some modulation from that going into rings, which we'll bring in a little bit later. That's good enough. I want you to be able to see what I'm doing here, but also down here. I'm gonna to switch to track one, and here's our drum gates that are going out to feed various things in here. Um, track one is feeding the octo controller, and hopefully, hopefully, you can see how this little friend is beating right here. So let's give ourselves a nice four on the floor pulse. Wonderful. Dun, dun, dun. That's a tempo. This is now synced to this clock right here, or these drum gates. Remember, drum gates and triggers and clocks all share a relationship with each other. They're all little pulses that tell things to do things at a certain time. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start turning up the modulation that this thing is sending out to the stereo dipole filter and this. Okay, remember how I said we are feeding this gate being created by this through a clock divider. Every single time this goes high, it triggers the Zadar, which is a um, complex shape generator. Uh, so basically acting almost as like an envelope trigger for us. And that's also feeding this for some modulation. So by 
hanging everything off of this clock right here, and sending it into here for modulation, we now have the ability to play around with how this triggers back. So hopefully this will be really obvious. change the way it's playing back because we keep on fucking with the clock down here and this thing is sending our clock to the clock divider we're able to change the way that our modulation affects our sequence just by playing with gates down here So the reason the Keystep Pro is so amazing for this whole process is because not only do we have eight sets of drum gates that can send out different, you know, clocks that we can instantly subdivide, or speed up, that's all, it's all through that drum sequencer, but we have clock out, reset out, two MIDI outs, and the USB port. All of these can send clock data to everything that you need. If you have the space for it, and you're thinking about getting into modular of any kind, get one of these. This will help you immensely in getting all this to sync. The point of this video was to hopefully show you that this stuff is a little complicated, but it doesn't have to be. Do your research when you're buying sequencers, when you're buying things that uh, are gonna need to be synced to each other, think about how you're gonna sync them together and make sure that you have the tools that you need to do that. And then play. Play with your clocks. watching. If you have any tips and tricks with clock or any favorite clock modules, I would literally love to hear about them. <laughs> I am in the market for a clock to replace Tempe. Hey, if you have any tips about Tempe too, let me know. Thanks for watching. My name is Jeremy. This is Red Means Recording, and I hope you have a wonderful day.